Ska ta introduktion först. Ja, okej. Okay. Uh, what is your name and uh, what did, is your job? My name is Anna and I work at Taxi Port. Um, my name is Simon uh, and I'm a summer student at the Tech Support uh, Department here at Nordic uh, on the Behavior uh, Project, the uh, B Project. Welcome back to the video series documenting and showcasing the Behavior Monitoring Project, an IoT project developed over the course of the summer by our students here at Nordic Semiconductor. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the development of the Behavior Monitoring website. So let's take a look at how our website fetches real-time data from our monitoring system. The cloud unit of the system receives processed sensor data and is responsible for turning that data into JSON formatted messages and sending them to the NRF cloud. The sensor data from the cloud is then accessed and stored in the third-party real-time database. From here, the sensor data can be fetched and displayed on our website. Uh, the purpose of the website is to visualize the data from the beehives we have on the roof here at Nordic. Uh, last year, they already started on this web page, but they didn't finish, so they haven't like displayed the charts and all the functions we wanted to have on the website. There are like two parts. Uh, it's me and Simon, and Simon has mostly worked on from the cloud to the Firebase. And then I've been working on the other side from Firebase to DevZone or yeah, the web page. NRF Cloud is Nordic Semiconductor's IoT cloud service and is optimized for Nordic Semiconductor's wireless devices. Firebase is an app development platform backed by Google. We use the Firebase Real-Time Database, a cloud-hosted NoSQL database that lets you store and sync data between devices in real-time. Using the NRF Cloud's REST API, the sensor data is fetched and stored in the Firebase database. Uh, the reason why we're using a third-party database, such as Firebase in this case, is because the NRF Cloud only stores device messages for up to 30 days. And maybe the beekeepers want to know information about the hives from maybe a year ago or longer than that. So we needed to have the data in a database which can store the data for longer. So we've made a pipeline that transfers the data from the NRF cloud directly to the uh, Firebase database. This is done by using REST API. Uh, we send GET requests to the NRF cloud, and then the data we receive from the GET requests are sent to Firebase uh, using uh, functions from the Firebase API. The sensor data is fetched through the Firebase API and displayed on our own website. The temperature, humidity, and weight of the hives, as well as the outside temperature, are visualized with graphs using Google Charts. The data from the woodpecker detector, as well as a phone number registration for notifications, are displayed in individual tabs. Hello, my name is Sif Anna Laikin, and I'm studying electronic system designs and innovation at NTNU. Uh, at Nordic, I'm working uh, with implementing an SMS warning system so that the beekeeper can know if there's some kind of extreme conditioning uh, happening to the beehive like weight or temperature or humidity so he can go and yeah fix the problem as fast as possible the way it works is that if there's any like alarmingly high or low uh, values it will uh, send an sms to your phone and it will kind of look like this where you can see weight warning at time yeah, we're going to change that. Uh, the weight of uh, Hive test is reaching an alarmingly low value of 0, 0.0. So that's just dummy data, but that's basically the idea. This video showcasing the behavior monitoring website is a part of a video series. Check out the rest of the videos to learn more about the other modules that were developed by our summer students.